Hey guys, Fat Buddy Cat here. How you doing? Today, we're going to stage a motor on this mini bike. Alright guys, so first thing I'm going to do is uh, get this motor back off this plate. Alright, now, I don't have it tightened down or anything, but a really cool thing about these OMB warehouse riser plates are that they're threaded. Okay, which means you don't have to deal with a nut on the bottom side of this, okay? It has the welded insert, all right? So, pretty cool. I'm going to get that off there real quick. Clean it up, too. All right, so here's the plan. Uh, in order to mount this plate, okay, uh, we can use some holes that are on it all right now if we go over here i really don't think these are going to line up with anything over here oh hey what are you doing okay uh so maybe this way no doesn't line up with anything all right so we're going to have to make our own holes, but we should only have to drill four single holes like these through this plate, all right? And we can still get adjustability where our back ones are slotted, okay? These are our front holes, all right? So we're going to be extending those, all right, to have a slot. That way, we can go forward to back when we drill our holes. All right, before we go doing our slots, I want to uh, get the motor back on there. No, this is cleaned off. Um, and try to get our clutch and our jack shaft on and get an idea of where our chain's going to line up. Okay, so we have out our clutch clutch bolt, our jack shaft plate, and our bolt to install the plate on the motor. Well, let's see what happens, guys. Alright, guys, so I got the plate on. Um, these bolts fit fine. Um, down here, I ended up using, uh, there was a shorter one, I believe it would have been for like a clutch bolt. Uh, that one is now over here all right and then i have another bolt that i'll be using for the uh little clutch arena all right so uh i'm gonna get this thing put on the bike now all right i'm not gonna space the clutch yet because i'm not sure which side is going to be facing out okay the nice thing with these centrifugal clutches guys uh if you didn't know and now you will <laughs> You can run them this way, or you can run them this way, all right? So we're going to see what gives us the best offset to get our plate lined up with the stock plate, all right? As well as getting our chain, you know, where it needs to be if the clutch is running one way, you know, and it catches the chain out here, then our inward sprocket would go to the back. If the chain flipped the other way, it would catch this sprocket, and then the outward sprocket would catch to the rear sprocket. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's what I mean. Let's get it on the bike. I'll show you. Wow, this is looking pretty rad. Fits right in there. All right. Um, so, this is with the plate. Uh, I believe we're just a little bit to the left. Okay. And you see the billet plate up there for our jack shaft, right? And you see our sprocket. Okay, we're just about even with the face of it, okay? So, I'm going to try to bring that plate. See how I'm hanging over on the left side? I'm going to try to hang it over on the right. See what happens. Alright, now we have the plate all the way to the right so that our left side... I'm sorry guys, I'm sitting down, is uh, flush, 
here, okay? Now, scoot back here, and we can get down and look, and uh, that's looking promising, all right? Because if our inside sprocket comes back to the rear sprocket, we know we can space that off of that plate, all right? So I think that's telling us we can set our clutch up, guys, to run with our drive sprocket on the outside, all right? Let me get some more things on here and get a better visual for you. Okay, next thing I'm going to have to do, now that we know the clutch is going to go on this way, is we need to make space on the back side for our bolts and our washers back there, all right? So, I have a spacer. Okay. And... I think a washer will get us there. Eh, let me mess around with what I have here. See if we can get a little bit closer. I think we have a... Not a fit? No. How about this one? Okay, that's a little bit better. We'll run with that. All right, let's see what we got. We got a spacer. Got a washer. We have a key. We have a clutch. Let's get that lined up, guys. Okay. Then I have another small spacer that I made. Okay. Then we just have our lock washer and our washer, all right? Some grade 8 stuff, guys. We'll slide our spacer on. Okay. So, once that's tightened in, there's going to be quite a few threads in there. Alright, just as much as like a normal clutch bolt would have, I'd say. Um, it could go a little bit longer. But, uh... That'll work. See what I'm saying? That's not even sending it home yet. All right. Next thing we'll be going after the jack shaft setup. Okay. And I'll show you the reason why I have this set up this way and not towards the inside. Now I have the back side of our jack shaft installed. Okay. This is our bearing um, support shaft portion okay and get you a nice back view here all right so you can see what we're working with now you could try to be fancy and tricky and mount this thing backwards but you're going to get some crazy offset on the back side of it no matter what um so i was looking at it like well maybe i could put my sprocket on the back side and you know shuffle some things but Look, we are so close to perfect with our tank, okay? If we go backwards, it's not going to hurt us. We're in the full forward position right now, all right? And I can loosen this cap, and I can take it off, okay? And I can get gas in here, all right? And that's something that is sort of important to me with my design, all right? You know, it might be a little tricky, but there we go. So, um, next, guys, is going to be trying to figure out these sprockets, all right? 
we're going to want one, I believe, as close to the face of this as possible, and then the other one out here. So we might end up with something like this. Okay, going on. But uh, let me look at that. Alright guys, so here's where you put your spinning bomby knocker on the end to take out your opponents. <laughs> it's not that kind of thing. Uh, here's what I have so far, okay? We have our 11 tooth up front. Uh, I probably got to flip flop these, I might not. We'll see, I got to check. Um, I didn't do that for any specific reason besides spacing, okay? So bear with me. Um, same with the shaft, all right? It's gonna be measured and cut to size. Once we get our spacing right, uh, when we come around back, all right, and we hunker down here, all right? Now I can see I gotta pitch the motor a little bit, all right? I'm a little out of square, but my sprockets aren't looking too bad. And you got to remember, nothing's tightened down, okay? So, I think you can kind of see what we're going for. Um, what I'll do back here is put one of my lock collars on, okay? And then just measure the other side where my lock collar is going to go. But not until I find my spacing, alright? And then I'll mark it and cut it. Okay, now I might just go ahead and cut this thing a little bit shorter so we don't have it hanging out there. But uh, let me see what I'm going to need. Alright, quick update. Uh, I used the stock chain from the bike and I cut one that is long, meaning the engine is all the way forward. Alright, so you know we can bring it back and take something out of this when we set it. But this is going to give us a nice straight line, alright where we're lined up on the edge of our engine plate and on the front across okay where our foot peg is and our cross member is all right now we're kind of hoping that that's straight and i looked with a tape measure and you see those two holes off the back of the plate there it's kind of in the shadow right here okay we we have parallel distances all right, so we are square, okay? Or very close to square. The squares I think we're gonna need to be. Um, when we come back here, all right, we're looking very, very straight on our chain, okay? If you look underneath where the tensioner wheel is, that might throw you off a little, okay? But if you look straight down the bike, that's a very, very straight line up, okay? And we're only going to be running 35 chain on this. Alright, so here's our spacing up front. Okay. Now, that, that's not bad, guys. Alright, I don't know if you can see it, but at the very closest, I'm probably a tight eighth. Okay. Um could add a washer there all right and I might because I think I'm gonna have to get some washers to space that out a little bit all right before I get my final measurement so I'm gonna see what I have and uh, if I don't have them guys I might have to hit the hardware store first thing in the morning well that's gonna have to be a wrap guys uh, like I said I'm gonna need those 5 8 washers all right, to get my spacing right, my chain's going to be somewhere probably around there. All right, and I might try to get one washer back here. All right, and then one between these two. And then a couple, maybe only one out here. Then I'll put my lock collar. Uh, the hardware store also has uh, the split collars. So I might get a couple of those just to double up my ends. Back there, it shouldn't be in the way of anything at all. 
and up here it should give me the proper spacing with the head on my uh, clutch bolt all right that way we have a nice straight line for when we're making a guard for this thing later on all right so uh tomorrow morning guys first thing i'm gonna get this done all right i'll get this thing on here um get this chain set get this cut back get everything tightened on all right and then i'll be looking at how we connect this plate to the stock plate on this mini bike and uh, it's going to be pretty straightforward, but like I said, we might have a little trick with that plate, making some notches, okay? We're going to have to make some kind of, uh, you know, some slots, guys. <laughs> Alright, they're not that fun, but they don't have to be that hard either. So, we'll get after it. But, uh, thanks for watching. You guys have a good night. You know what it is. See you tomorrow.